your commanders, and we'll talk about what I expect in this new offense under Eric Bieniemy. I think this is going to be a really big jump for a lot of players, the offense as a whole. And I, I chalked to just like this entire division. I just really like this division. And I think this team is going to be due for a big step forward. Now, I understand this is not Pat Mahomes. This is Sam Howell at the charge. So we can't just be like Eric Bieniemy. He had a great play calling experience because he had the best quarterback of all time. I get that. You know, they were always at 60% or higher pass rate since Mahomes took over. I'm not projecting that. But Ron Rivera, dating back to the Carolina days, has always been at 55% or higher other than last season with the Commanders where it was a near 50-50 split in pass and run. Even with Cam Newton, the guy liked to air it out, Ron Rivera. So he's not opposed to being a little bit pass happier. He's steadily been above league average as well. He likes to push the pace, Riverboat Ron. So I have them shaking out with a big jump in pass attempts compared to last year where they were eh, not even that huge of a jump though, you know, 571 pass attempts, you know, another 25 or so in the enemy with a little bit of downgrade in the rush attempt department, given that I think they'll use the running backs a lot, but more so in the passing game, Taylor Gibson. Oh, I can't wait to tell you guys about my projection there, but as a team level, you know, again, above average league plays is expected here a little bit above average with pass rate over the run rate is what I expect. And I think I was one of the things that probably surprised me the most about this commanders team is how much I ended up liking Sam Howell. I, I, I liked him actually coming out. I liked him as a rookie last year in rookie drafts. I couldn't believe he fell to round five. And I think he's going to make a lot of NFL teams look dumb. He's only been on the field for very limited action. Preseason game as a starter went eight for 14, 129 with two rushing touchdowns in a little bit less than a half. Looked really good there. And he made one career start last year, had a rushing touchdown in that game, threw for around 170 yards. And this was in a, a gross overall offense, thinking Eric Bieniemy's system. You know, Howell coming out of college, 91.6 uh, passing grade from PFF, 90.9 rushing grade uh, from PFF. There was a lot to enjoy about him. He had over a thousand rushing yards. And it's weird because he runs like a 5040 around Peyton Manning's level of speed, yet he just is, is a bull. He likes to run people over. He's much shifty. So his time speed does not reflect uh, what we see on the field of him as a runner. So as you can see, interesting passing totals, 4,300 and, and 28 touchdowns. But then really, you know, the, the 88 rushes, 440 yards and seven touchdowns, given that every time we've seen him on the field, he's rushed for a score. I don't think that's crazy. The guy really does like to call his own number. When he gets in there, we saw over a 1,000 yards rushing in college. So Sam Howell, very, very sneaky. Now, of course, this could go wrong if – Sam Howell doesn't end up being the starter. If Jacoby Brissett beats him out, they say it's going to be a competition there. They also have said that Sam Howell, the beat writers, think he has a very, very big edge based on how he's been being used so far in training camp as the clear-cut number one guy. Uh, so I like Sam Howell quite a bit, as you can see there at the top. Um, and how do I expect this to now trickle down? Let's discuss that uh, in this passing game distribution. So uh, right off the top, you can see 14% target share going to Antonio Gibson. That would be a huge spike, but we've seen McKinnon average right around 12 to 15% target share throughout his career. He's now gone. And you mix in the fact that Eric Bieniemy has always used his running backs extensively in this Andy Reid style offense. Um, Jarek McKinnon being leading the league in fantasy points per touch last year as Eric Bieniemy's pass catching back. So I think 14% target share, 83 to I mean, potential for even 100 targets exists there for Antonio Gibson, a converted wide receiver. All the training camp talk has been how often running backs are being used in the screen game and the, the slot moving Antonio Gibson around as a mismatched nightmare is what Ron Rivera called him. I don't know. This is how he should have been used his entire career. Very explosive guy, very quality receiver. Uh, I really, really like Antonio Gibson seeing a quality target share here. Uh, but that's still fourth on the team because I like 20% target share going to Terry McLaurin. That's right around what he has seen. This would be the lowest targets actually for Terry McLaurin. I do think that's because Jahan Dotson is going to come in here. As you can see, I have him projected for quite a high amount of targets. Uh, but over his last seasons, Terry McLaurin, he has seen – 141, 130, and then 120 targets at 25, 24, and 23% target share. So definitely could be a bit of a downgrade for Terry McLaurin because I think Jahan Dotson, if he ends up staying healthy all year, he missed some time last year, but I think he is an absolute stud, and I don't think the gap between these two 
is going to be too big. So 17% share over 101 targets coming for Jahan Dotson. How do I expect him to perform with that? I think McLaurin, you know, nice 14 yards or so catch rate, catches a bit more of his passes. He's never been too crazy of a touchdown score outside of his rookie year where he had nine. Uh, we haven't seen a ton of touchdowns coming from McLaurin, you know, five or less in two of his last three years, six on the other one. So not an elite touchdown score. Meanwhile, Jahan Dotson, seven touchdowns last year, uh, despite missing time, it was a twenty percent of his catches went for touchdowns. Now that's unsustainable, especially if he does get this type of volume increase that I'm projecting him for. But the kid can score. He's not a huge body, but he really knows how to get open, uh, especially in the red zone. Use that short area quickness. Was a beast last year at that, and I don't see any reason why that wouldn't continue. So, assuming he can stay healthy and, and get to that hundred and targets or so, I project him for eight touchdowns. Feels very reasonable. That's a big drop. You know, thirteen percent TD percent from twenty percent. I think that with volume is a fair drop, but I also think eight touchdowns is very, very much within his realm of possibility. So I've been big in McLaurin uh, in early drafts. I still am. I still like him in that that late fourth, early fifth range. But honestly, Jahan Dotson going two rounds later, he just came out so much better than I expected in projections. And I think that's the guy, if I'm going after one of these receivers at their price, I prefer him myself. And then you got Curtis Samuel. You know, he's going to be a volume guy out of the slot, a good move around piece can get him in the back. I think the enemy's going to have a real fun time with him. And that's the real risk to, I guess, Gibson is if he decides to use Curtis Samuel as a runner, move him to the backfield and then split that receiving workload. We could see Gibson's share getting into and, and get and Curtis Samuel go up a bit. But right now I have him going similar to what we saw last year, four touchdowns, 653 yards, 61 catches on a fair amount of the share there with a, another 10 catches and maybe rushing in or 10 rushes rather 80 yards and a touchdown there. I think it's fair for, Curse Samuel, a fine late round stab, especially if you're going to pair him up with Sam Howell as a, a phenomenal late round stab at quarterback. And then tight end, that's that's the tricky piece here, is the enemy's offense, obviously, when you have Travis Kelsey, you're going to funnel to the tight end. And I don't expect, you know, a 20-ish percent target share to go to any tight end and certainly not even a combined 20% share. But we have already gotten reports that in camp, the tight ends are moving all over the place, are more active than they've ever been in a Ron Rivera style offense. I just, it's Logan Thomas and Cole Turner both showing out right now. So if one of them becomes the clear cut guy and the other one is a distant number two, I could probably buy into them as good fantasy sleepers. I really do think this offense is going to be tight end friendly, especially with all these other weapons around potentially creating these mismatches. But if they're constantly nibbling at each other's cheese, which is what I do expect. I don't know that either of them will ever become fully viable for you. But don't forget, Logan Thomas is just a couple seasons removed of being like a clear cut, your know, top seven tight end pick. He's definitely you know, getting up there in age, but I do think he can make some things happen there. Uh, Cole Turner, though, very exciting young guy, definitely more athletic. So maybe he's the ultimate one that becomes there. Definitely a situation of modern training camp if one of them can gain the edge over the others. And then we'll move to the running game and just talk about these guys real quick. Already the biggest piece of note though we already covered is that I think 83 targets, 60 catches, 462 yards, and about five touchdowns. I know that five touchdowns might seem crazy, but we just saw Jarek McKinnon catch nine. Antonio Gibson averaged a touchdown every nine touches last year. I think he's Jarek McKinnon on steroids. Now he doesn't have Pat Mahomes to give those touchdown opportunities to happen more often, but I really don't think five receiving touchdowns is that crazy. He's also a great touchdown scorer on the ground. I just, I've always been a pretty big Antonio Gibson guy and typically he hasn't let me down. Um, and I think this might be the best usage role, even with Brian Robinson, seeing more of the rushing work, as you guys can see here, 40% of the carries going to Brian Robinson. I think he's a, a solid guy. That's probably going to only get better given that last year he was recovering from getting shot before the season. I mean, that's a pretty bold ask of the guy. Maybe he can run in a few more than five. But I do think Gibson is such a good red zone guy. And we saw how they like to put McKinnon in there and, and how cute Andy Reid and NB enemy like to get there when they get close. That's why I do have Sam Howell Cohen for as many touchdowns, 28 as I do, throwing it there, run, running those in as well. That's where I do think Brian Robinson could be a little bit capped and just not bring a ton to the table. If his touchdowns are getting vultured by Howell in a, a more pass-happy attack, if his receiving work is pretty much nothing because we have Antonio Gibson, doing some damage there. We can see Robinson catch. He is a fine receiver. He could definitely have some screens as a, a misdirect and, and do some damage there. But I just think he's definitely you know, going at the same price as Gibson right now, a little bit overvalued. I think Gibson will have the more valuable role as that mismatch kind of move around chess piece for Eric Bieniemy. So what is up, you fantasy wolf? Thanks so much for tuning in. 
If you haven't already, share your thoughts in the comments, check out some more videos, and join the newest Wolfpack by subscribing below. Ooh.